Good morning. I'm Alex. I'm working with Dr. K in, here at Ohio Wesleyan. And obviously my talk is Lifetime Measurements in Selenium 71. Basically that means I'm measuring how long it takes for the Selenium 71 nucleus to decay from various excited energy states to its ground state. Here we see the table of nuclides with all the elements and isotopes arranged by proton and neutron number. Selenium-71 is in this region here, and here's a magnified version of that area. The isotopes in black are stable or nearly stable, and the farther you get off that center line, the obviously less stable the isotopes are and the less is known about them. And selenium-71 is just far enough off that center line, it's half like this 4.74 minutes, that not much is known about it, so this work is really pushing the bounds about what is known about these isotopes. In a nucleus, uh, the protons and neutrons can take discrete energy states, similar to the electron orbitals in a complete atom. Here we have a selenium-71 nucleus. It has 34 protons and 37 neutrons. And most of them are paired up down here in the lowest states and not doing anything interesting. But there is this one odd neutron that is free to hop around to the higher states. And each of these states has a characteristic energy, an angular momentum or spin, and a parity, which is an intrinsic reflection symmetry. In addition to this single particle behavior, there is a collective behavior where uh, many nuclei, especially in this mass region, have this oblong shape and will tend to be spinning. And this rotation also has a characteristic energy and spin and parity. Here we see the uh, chart of energy levels that are available to selenium-73. This is similar to selenium-71 in that it has one odd neutron, but it has one additional pair of neutrons as well. The individual states are linked by transitions which are associated with gamma ray emissions. This is similar to visible light emissions in an atom when an electron drops from a high energy state to a low energy state, except that with protons and neutrons, the energy is much higher and tends to be in the hundreds or even over a thousand kilo electron volts, or KeV, which is the popular unit of energy in this field. <coughs> These orderly ladder-like structures where the states have fairly predictable energies are associated with collective behavior. Here's the level structure for selenium-69, which has one fewer pair of neutrons than my nucleus, and it's quite a bit messier. The collective bands here are much weaker, and there are a lot of these irregular low energy states, and those are associated with single particle behavior. In selenium-71, we have both structures. The, the collective bands are very prominent, but we also have a few of these irregular single particle states. And we suspected this was because selenium-71 is a transitional nucleus with a moderate degree of collectivity, but we needed to make some measurements to be sure. Specifically, we needed to measure the lifetimes of the individual energy states, essentially the half-lives. To make selenium-71, researchers at Florida State University took a target of iron-54 and shot sodium-23 ions at it. And occasionally, two of these ions will fuse together, producing rubidium-77. However, the collision is very energetic, causing the compound nucleus to throw off some particles. And 7.6% of the time, this gives you selenium-71. To measure the lifetimes of the energy states, you need to know how long it takes between when the nucleus is formed and when the gamma rays are emitted. And the nucleus starts out moving very quickly, a couple percent the speed of light, in fact, and it slows down in a predictable way inside the iron target. So knowing this, we can determine the time by measuring the speed of the nucleus from the Doppler shift of the gamma rays. This is similar to the Doppler shift for sound waves or the redshift in cosmology. So if the nucleus is, decays quickly, 
it is still moving quickly. And this rear gamma ray detector will read a strong red shift and a lower gamma ray energy. And this forward detector will read a blue shift and a higher gamma ray energy. And this will be different if the nucleus is moving more slowly or is nearly stopped. My work primarily involved using computer programs that simulate this process to determine the best fit for the lifetime of each individual state. Now, an individual nucleus will emit several gamma rays in quick succession, less than 100 nanoseconds, and this is called being in coincidence. And we use this to be sure that the gamma rays did in fact come from the same nucleus. So here is a chart of all the gamma rays that were seen in coincidence with a very prominent transition at 639 keV. And most of these peaks correspond to other transitions in selenium-71. A few of them correspond to other nuclei that have a transition near 639 keV. And there's also this electron-positron annihilation, which pretty much shows up everywhere. These are small sections of another spectrum. Uh, the gamma ray energy here is near 1150 keV, and it's as seen in coincidence with 1037 keV. And those are two transitions that are right on top of each other in the level scheme, so the coincidence is very strong. Uh, this comes from the forward gamma ray detector, so there are these blue shifted gamma ray caps. <coughs> This comes from the rear gamma ray detector, so there are red shifted counts. And because individual nuclei decay at different times, there's this range, and many of them show no shift at all. I used a program called FITS to determine the best theoretical line shape for these individual data points that uh, determines the most probable lifetime of the state. And there is a contaminant here from germanium 70, but the program can work around that within the margin of uncertainty. And in this case, the lifetime was determined to be about 0.34 picoseconds, or a third of a trillionth of a second. I measured 15 lifetimes in this way, and I used them to compute transition quadrupole moments, or QT values, which is a measure of uh, the degree of collectivity. And I compared them with a theoretical model here, where the positive parity states are shown. And they're in rough agreement with the theory, although a little higher than what the theory predicts on average. What I thought was a little more enlightening, though, was to compare them to neighboring known QT values from neighboring nuclei. And all of these have one odd neutron like selenium-71. Krypton-73 and selenium-73 are known to have high collectivity and have high QT values. Germanium-69 has low collectivity and low QT values with one outlier. And selenium-71 winds up in the middle. And this confirms what we suspected, that it has a moderate degree of collectivity, which makes it especially nice for studying how the single particle and collective behaviors interact. And the, the last thing I did in this project was to look for new gamma ray coincidences that would correspond to new transitions that could be added to the level scheme. And I made a few changes that are shown here in red, but my most significant discovery led me to move this band here on the positive parity side over here to the negative parity side. And this, this was based on coincidences with this partial band, uh, noting that this is a long-lived state where we cannot see coincidence. Also, the transition energies were the same in this partial band, and there's a certain way that you expect level schemes to look. You would not expect to see a band here, but you would very clearly expect to see one here. And since that had not been seen before, I suspect that this band had simply been misplaced.
What is that image we're looking at right now? This image is a particle collision from the relativistic heavy ion collider, which is somewhat similar to the apparatus that was used um, at Florida State for this experiment, but much higher energy and more concerned with higher energy particles. How, how tricky was it to figure out that you had to move to the, the parity of that one band had been misidentified? Well, it, what, it, what, what, what did you use to make that decision? So the first thing I noticed was that um, on each, between that band and the partial band I mentioned, uh, there are two states that have the same energy, and that's highly improbable. And then I simply went back and looked through the uh, coincidences between them, and they were very weak, but it seemed, so, so it was somewhat difficult to pin it down, but it seemed like the coincidences were there. Are there any other questions?